If you were to ask the average person what fails first in a citywide blackout, they'd probably say the lights, right? But the truth is simpler and scarier. The first critical failures are the pumps, the pressure, and the little motors that quietly move water, fuel, air, and data. That's what we're going to cover today. This is educational, straight to the point, and focused on what you can plan for. Here are the first 15 things that typically fail in a city blackout. What that means for you, and one simple action you can take for each. Let's get into it. Number one, building water booster pumps. In most mid-rises and high-rises, water doesn't reach upper floors by magic. Electric booster pumps push it up the stack. When the power dies, those pumps stop immediately. Lower floors may see a slow dribble for a short time. Mid and upper floors go dry fast. Toilets don't refill. Hot water tanks don't pull from thin air. Action, store water where gravity helps you, not where it hurts you. Keep sealed containers on a low cool shelf and keep a clean bucket for one manual flush only after you've budgeted drinking water first. Number two, elevators. Elevators stop exactly where they are. They stay there until power returns or trained responders arrive. Your stairwell becomes your only route for groceries, strollers, wheelchairs, and emergencies. In summer, stairwells act like chimneys. In winter, they feel like freezers. Action, learn your stair path today, not later. Stage a tiny stair kit by the door. A headlamp, thin gloves, and a small water bottle. If you live above the fourth or fifth floor, plan how you'll stage water at home so you're not hauling every ounce up multiple flights on day one. Number three, electronic access and garage gates. Card readers, McLocks, intercom buzzers, and roll-up garage doors depend on power and control boards. When they go down, doors go dumb. People get locked out or locked in. Delivery stall. Garages jam. Action, learn the mechanical overrides for your building and your parking. Find the manual release for your garage door. Carry a physical key if your system allows it and write the steps down on paper where you'll see them. Number four, traffic signals. Intersections go dark instantly. That means four-way negotiations, hesitation, and fender benders. It also means emergency vehicles move slower and evacuations take longer than people expect. Action, print two non-highway routes out of your neighborhood. Drive them once on a calm day. Mark one backup turn for each route. Paper in the glove box doesn't need a battery. Number five, home internet, modems, and routers. Your modem and router die with your household power. Even if your provider has some nodes up, your Wi-Fi is still down. Smart devices go quiet. Cloud instructions and saved bookmarks are suddenly locked behind logins you can't complete. Action. Print essential numbers, account IDs, and two or three local maps. Keep a small notebook with plain language steps for restarting or operating important devices. Don't rely on a cloud note you can't reach. Number six, cell towers on battery. Most cell sites have limited backup batteries or small generators. Some sectors last a few hours. Others blink out quickly. Coverage turns patchy. Text stall and group coordination fails right when you need it most. Action set a simple family communications plan now. Top of the hour check-ins. Short text messages first if calls fail. If you own FRS or GMRS radios, agree on a primary channel and a backup. Set a nearby meeting point if everything digital goes quiet. Number seven, payment systems and point of sale. Card terminals need power and networks. When those go down, many stores go cash only or close entirely. Even shops with generators may have processors that are offline. Action, keep a modest emergency cash cushion and small bills and coins stored safely at home. No one nearby store that can operate manually. Exact change moves you through the line when patience is thin. Number eight, gas station pumps. Fuel underground is not your problem, moving it is. Pumps need electricity. A few stations will have backup power and those become magnets for long, loud lines. Lines attract conflict and attention. Action, keep your vehicle above half a tank as a baseline. If your area allows it, learn the legal safe way to store small amounts of fuel. Keep a printed list of stations that historically run on backup and plan your first two fuel stops off the main highway. Number nine, refrigeration and the neighborhood cold chain. Your fridge, your freezer, the grocery cooler, and the restaurant walk-in all stop at once. The clock starts on food safety. Ice disappears first. People open doors too often and warm air does the rest. Action, keep a fridge thermometer. Limit door openings. Eat the most perishable items first. Have a small cooler ready for priority foods. Tape a short eat first list inside your pantry so you don't waste mental energy in the dark. Number 10, building ventilation and corridor fans. Make up air units, bathroom fans, and stair pressurization fans shut off. Halls get stale. Humidity climbs. In heat waves, apartments that depend on powered ventilation become uncomfortable fast. Fans don't cool without power, they only move hot air. Action, choose a lifeboat room. Pick the smallest, darkest, coolest interior room you can seal. Add blackout curtains and draft stops. Plan to rest there during the day to protect sleep because good judgment depends on it. Number 11, fire alarm panels and emergency lighting. Panels and exit lights usually run on small batteries. They chirp, then they fade. Hallways and stairs go dark. People trip while carrying water and supplies. Action, put glow tape on door handles, on light switches, 
and on the first and last stair of your main route. Keep a headlamp by every bed with spare batteries next to it. Know where the manual pull stations are in your building. Number 12. Sewage lift stations and backflow risk. Cities rely on lift stations to push wastewater uphill or across town. When power dies, those pumps stop unless there's effective backup. Even with backup, they need fuel and crews. If that chain falls behind, levels rise and low-lying basements can see backflow. Action! If you live below street grade, ask your building manager about backflow protection. Minimize water use until systems stabilize. Watch for slow drains, gurgling, or odors. Store important items off the floor in basements. Number 13. Water quality and pressure advisories. Treatment steps and distribution pressure can drop after a big outage. That can trigger boil water advisories or temporary do-not-drink notices, even if taps still flow. Action store several days of drinking water ahead of time. Learn two safe disinfection methods, boiling and an appropriate chemical method, and write those steps on paper near the sink. You don't want to guess ratios by flashlight. Number 14. ATMs and banking access. ATMs often go offline in a wide outage. When a few machines do work, they empty fast. Shops that stay open may refuse large bills or simply can't make change. Action. Keep a modest, realistic cash stash and small bills organized in a simple envelope. Track what you spend during an outage so the recovery week doesn't surprise you. Number 15. Cloud logins and verification loops. Many apps you think work offline still try to verify. They want a network, a code sent to a dead phone, or an accurate time source. If GPS time or servers are unreachable, you can get locked out of your own notes and tools. Action. Build a one-page Go Binder. Include key contacts, medications, policy numbers, a neighborhood phone tree, basic maps, and printed recovery codes for any accounts you must access. Paper is boring. In a blackout, boring works. Let's zoom out for a moment and connect the dots. Blackouts don't just turn off light. They stop motion. They stop the push behind everything you rely on. Booster pumps, elevators, access systems, traffic signals, routers and radios, payment networks, pumps that move fuel, fans that move air, small batteries that buy you a little time and then quit. Lift stations that keep the city's worst problem out of your home. Logins that suddenly expect a code and a clock you can't provide. When you plan around those early failures, you turn a scary surprise into a manageable inconvenience. Now let's end with three quick, practical moves you can take today. First, print what matters. Two backup driving routes, your stair route, and a simple top-of-the-hour family check-in plan. Tape one copy near the door and put another in the glove box. Second, stage water and light. Put sealed water on a low, cool shelf. Place a headlamp by every bed with spare batteries next to it. Third, build that one-page go binder. Contacts, medications, policy numbers, a short list of no-cook meals, recovery codes, and a neighborhood phone tree. Keep it where you can grab it in the dark. This isn't about panic. It's about flow, not glow. The first things to fail are the systems that move what you need from A to B. Learn them once. Prepare a little. And the next time the city goes still, you won't freeze or guess. You'll execute your plan. Take care, stay safe, and prepare. We'll talk to you all later.